So I've created another passive experiment. My first one was uh, with the random screensaver, the randomly generated numbers. And my second one is a bit different. And it's important to have these passive experiments so you can do them whenever you want. And you can do them without like pre-planning it. So I can't really get out of body on demand at the moment. So it just kind of happens randomly. And uh, it's really important that I have these passive experiments to perform um, when I have nothing else to do. So this second experiment that I have, it involves me sending a specialized email address to people, to live humans that I come across before we part ways. And hopefully they will contact me when they wake up, assuming that they're projectors. So you want to, you know, ask this person intens intensively to contact you when they wake up and you want to repeat the address as they're leaving because they might be, they're usually waking out of their projection if they are leaving you behind abruptly. So what I've done is I created a hotmail.com account just because this seems to be the most renowned type of email address in North America, like it's familiar to people. And then I've created a really brief, easy to remember name for the address. And also in the name suggests that I'm into OBEs. So if somebody wants to contact me talking about OBEs relating to this email address, they are not going to be afraid of uh, confusing me or getting embarrassed or anything. They're going to understand that I'm open to these kinds of things. So those are three different kind of criteria that you should meet when you're creating this email address. It has to be short, easy to remember, and well, four criteria. Um, short, easy to remember, and it should use a familiar domain or subdomain, and it should also suggest that you're into OBEs and stuff just because people are people aren't afraid of sending nonsensical stuff to you. And that's what I've been sending to people. Well, I've been sending my personal email address to people before we part ways, but I'm going to start sending this one now. And what I've done is I looked at this text, I looked at the text value of this email address on, on screen just intensely for a while, just so I hard code it and can send it visually to people. I think that's the best way of sending text uh, astrally. I'm not so sure though. I try to send the same thing in multiple ways so that it's really embedded in their, their mind when they wake up. I don't just try to send it like visually uh, and kind of try to simulate an auditory signal things like that it's hard to explain but I repeat it over and over again in all these as much of these modalities as I can and hopefully they will remember it and contact me when they wake out of their astral projection so you want to do this as they're um, exiting their projection so if somebody tells you that they need to go home for no reason they don't give you any reasoning or if they start like fading away or uh, sliding away from you it's because it's probably because they're waking out of their astral projection they have to, their physical body is calling them. And this is the point where you give them your contact point. So this address is something that I only know about in the physical world. Nobody knows about this. So if I get an email from somebody else and it relates to their, you know, experience out of body, then that is proof to me that this astral world exists. Some people create the most ridiculous, unobjective experiments and they say that it's proof. And these people, they just, um, they don't know the definition of the word proof or they are delusional in some way. A lot of people, you're, most of the experiments that you read in random articles or forum posts are just going to be nonsensical. They're not proper experiments at all. But uh, if you read Robert Monroe's books or any books about people who have done these things in lab settings and stuff, um, they know, they know how to do them really well. And uh, I'm really impressed with Monroe's experiments and what he was able to accomplish. I definitely recommend reading his books. So if I do get any results with this experiment, just like the other one, I will definitely make a video on it because it's pretty important to me. I mean, it's not proof to anybody but myself, but um, I'm probably pretty convincing to some of you. And uh, I think it's just important to document these things. Uh, through YouTube. I like to document just by talking. It's a lot easier. It's more interactive. Uh, people can like post their their opinions and stuff. So honestly, you can do these types of experiments like, uh, for instance, the random number generator thing. 
It's probably been done in a lab experiment successfully a bunch of times, but you would only be able to convince the people involved in the experiment that this plane of existence exists. It's, it's going to be a while before a significant portion of the world is convinced that there is a plane of existence that exists where we can you know, interact with the physical universe remotely, stuff like that. Anyways, that's it for this talk. I'll see you next video.